When it comes to improving at Warzone, few things are as important as making sure that your mouse and keyboard setup are as perfect as possible. So today we're going to be covering the best settings for the mouse and keyboard for Warzone PC players in order to maximize your potential. Hey everyone, it's Forrest or Dave here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing awesome today. I know I am. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the best settings for mouse and keyboard on PC for all of you amazing Warzone players. Um, there's few things as important as making sure that we get these things set up properly because a bad setup on your mouse, having some setting wrong, can really negatively impact your aim. And same thing goes for your keyboard in terms of your movement and just how quickly and optimized you can do things in Warzone. A game that's very much become a game about movement as much as it is about aim. So we're going to be covering everything we need to today from Windows settings, software that controls your peripherals, as well as in-game settings that you guys need to make sure you've got set correctly that will allow you to uh, become as good as you can be. If you do happen to enjoy this video, then please do leave a like down below. It honestly means more than anything to just see that like counter go up. It shows that I'm doing the right thing. It shows that you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, also, leave a comment. Comments are awesome. I like to get down in the comment section and reply to you guys, especially on your questions to me. So uh, don't be shy. Leave something down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So the first thing we're going to cover in terms of settings is our Windows mouse settings. So to get to that, uh, I'm on Windows 10, but if you're on a different version of Windows, you should be able to get to it in the same way. You're just going to come to your search bar, type in mouse and open up mouse settings and then click additional mouse options. Uh, and this will bring up this mouse properties page. This is what we're aiming for. Um, there's a couple of different things on here. Nothing in terms of buttons or wheel or hardware, anything like that. Make sure you've got the latest drivers for your, your mouse and your keyboard. That's very important. Uh, but you wanna specifically come to pointer options. This contains two very important settings uh, that we need to make sure we have selected correctly. So first of all is your pointer speed. And this is essentially your Windows sensitivity. I would highly recommend that you shove this right in the middle, uh, which is what most people will call six out of 11, uh, because there's 11 dashes here, and this is the sixth one, so it's perfectly halfway along. This just means that you're, you've got that one-to-one -one scale that the Windows will recognize. If you're comparing to other players who have certain sensitivities and setups, everyone is running six out of 11 here. So just go with that so you're matched up to, it gives you that baseline, okay? Next is this enhance pointer precision option here. Uh, a lot of people actually know what this does and will still by accident have this checked. We do not want this checked. If you've got a new PC, if you've got maybe a new version of Windows that you've just installed, this is likely to be checked by default. And what this does, even though it says enhance pointer precision, which sounds good, we want pointer precision, this enables mouse acceleration. Now, what is mouse acceleration? Mouse acceleration is essentially a technology that means that the distance your mouse or your pointer travels across the screen, uh, it, it relates to how quickly you move your mouse. That's not a good thing. As a PC gamer, as we're kind of rotating and looking around in Warzone, we want to know that when I move my mouse from X position to Y position, that I'm gonna turn a specific distance in the game. That way you develop the muscle memory. If you spot someone uh, at an angle you're not looking at, you know that you can quickly flick the mouse over and catch them. If you have mouse acceleration on, the speed at which you move the mouse will change how far you turn. And this means you can never develop any mouse, um, sorry, any muscle memory because you will just be constantly over or under aiming. A lot of people don't even realize they've got this on, but make sure you come into the mouse properties and turn it off because it will completely revolutionize how you play. I really hope that you guys have got both these settings already set up. If not, then I'm glad I put it in the video because it's too important to miss. Next up, we have our mouse software. Now, depending on what mouse you have, you're going to have a different looking software. Uh, if you've got a Logitech mouse, any kind of Logitech mouse, you'll have something similar to this. Um, but every different mouse manufacturer comes with some sort of way that you can set your DPI or dots per inch and your report rate or your polling rate or whatever it wants to call it. So these two settings are very important that we set before we even jump into the game. Let's start with DPI. DPI is essentially 
sensitivity. The higher you set your DPI, the higher sensitivity you go. So this is me at 800 DPI. If I select 3200 DPI, you see I start to lose control instantly because I'm not used to it. Um, if you were to double your DPI and half your sensitivity in game, you would get the same sensitivity feeling in game. So why would I recommend going with a lower DPI or why do most people go with DPIs typically under around a thousand? Well, it's basically because mice actually have based on their hardware, an optimal DPI that they're kind of meant to run at. Um, for many mice, that's around 600 to 800. Um, some are a little bit lower, some are a little bit higher. You can actually go on Google and search this up and find what the best DPI is for your mouse. But going outside of the kind of native range that your mouse works well at, uh, it will give you the higher sensitivity or the lower if you're going to those lower ends but you start to lose a bit of accuracy a bit of precision um on the actual hardware of your mouse and this is something which a lot of people don't know so whilst it says here i can go to 25,600 dpi not something anyone would ever want to do this is very likely to be some sort of scaled DPI. It's not actually physical hardware affecting changes. It's doing some sort of scaling. It's not very accurate. And yes, that's to an extreme example, but the similar thing can happen even if you go somewhere near 1,600 DPI, 2,000 DPI, and the same can happen on the lower ends as well. So my recommendation here would be to just stick with 800 DPI to start off with. Um, if that seems too quick for you, then, I, then I'd say go with 400. I wouldn't go above 1,600. That's the kind of range I would stick within. And that's if you look at streamers on Warzone or on any other FPS game, pros included, um, they will be in that, that uh, DPI range. So... I'm going to stick with 800, that's what I'd recommend you go with, and that'll give you a good baseline sensitivity to work with that your mouse is used to. Next is the polling rate. This can be set across a bunch of different ranges. Um, I typically see it in a range of 125 to 1000, with options for 500 and 250. As it says here, this says how often your mouse reports information to your computer. So it's how many per second. So currently I've got this set to 1000. So every second, my mouse is sending 1000 readings to my computer, updating exactly where the mouse is. So the standard thing here is the higher the better. The more reports we can send to our PC per second, the more accurate and precise the mouse is going to be. There's one caveat to this, however, and this is if you're on a low end PC. So if you're already struggling with kind of CPU issues for playing a game like Warzone, lowering the report rate can actually give you lower CPU usage, literally from moving your mouse. You can go into uh, your task manager or something which shows your CPU percentage that's being used on a low end computer and see that when you start moving your mouse around loads on a thousand polling rate, you actually get a CPU usage increase. I had this one on my old PCs and I was blown away by it. And I managed to get better performance in my game by just lowering this to 250. Now, technically, this is less precise, less accurate, but it's not really that noticeable unless you're getting to those really high end kind of professional status like level in the game. So basically, if you've got a good PC, even slightly good, just set it to a thousand to get the highest polling rate you can get. If you have a lower end PC and you're having some problems with CPU issues already, well, first of all, try and look into improving your, your setup because um, you can't live forever on that level of setup but also drop this polling rate down to 250 or even 125 and see if it helps your cpu so now we're in game and we're going to take a little bit of a break from the mouse to just cover the small bit about the keyboard now there's a lot less settings you can do for your keyboard like with the mouse you know the, you, your mouse has your dpi and a lot of sensitivity and a lot going on and to be fair that makes sense because you're using your mouse all the time for very accurate precision movements it's really what governs your aim but movement in Warzone is also incredibly important. The first thing in relation to your keyboard is your keybinds. Now, this isn't going to be a keybinds video because I'm not a massive fan of telling you guys what keybinds to use for certain things because it really is personal preference. A lot of what the game gives you, honestly, will just work out nicely. There's a couple of things which I think are different from usual. Um, for example, for me, I like my crouch to be on control because that's what it's like in a lot of games for me. And then I put my prone on Z. That's literally just pulling over from old games. I think by default, control is prone and C is crouch, but that just doesn't really work for me. You've honestly just got to play around and 
really just try different things out because you could do some crazy things like you can move your movement from WASD across one set of keys to ESDF. If you look on your keyboard, it's the same layout, the uh, the kind of the almost a plus sign, but it's moved over one and that, and that gives you access to more keys on the left side. There's a lot of things you can do with keybinds and you can go as crazy as you want with them until they work out for you. So you can follow what streamers use and stuff. There might be some well-known keybinds that people like, but in my opinion, just find what works for you. That's the key thing. Okay, the other thing in terms of keyboard, and it's probably one of the most important controls in the game in terms of your movement. If you come to the keyboard and mouse options and then the movement tab, it's this first option, slide behavior, which can be set to either hold or tap. And what this does is it changes how you slide in Warzone. If you have it on hold, then you have to hold down the button to slide while sprinting. If you have it on tap, then you just have to tap it. And what this leads to is a much quicker slide. And with slide cancelling and sliding in general being such a big part of Warzone, you need to have the set to tap. That's basically everything in terms of keyboard. So let's go back to the mouse. So let's start with the age old question of mouse sensitivity. This is what I say for everyone. Just pick a sensitivity, play with it for a while, and then just adjust small amounts up and down until you find something that works for you over the long run. When you switch to a new mouse sensitivity, it's not gonna feel good instantly. I said this in my aim guide. I had to play around with mouse sensitivity for absolutely ages. And I've now found a mouse sensitivity, which I pull across all my different games, all my different FPS games, and I use across all of them, so that when I'm swapping game, I'm not having to get used to different muscle memory. And for me, 5.73 has worked out. I'm not gonna dwell on the mouse sensitivity issue because it is personal preference and what works for you. I would usually recommend that you stick to a lower rather than a higher sensitivity because you can get much better micro movements and you can uh, not kind of overshoot or you have better control when you're, when you're actually ADS. So lower sensitivity is better, but it's not the be all and end all. Find something that works for you and stick to it and practice it. Next up, we have the aim down sight ADS mouse sensitivity. Now this, I think by default is set to legacy. However, I recommend that you change this to relative. By putting this setting to relative, we actually can get our ADS mouse sensitivity to feel exactly one-to-one -to, -one to our non-ADS mouse sensitivity, which is massively important when we're doing a lot of running around and looking around without ADS, and then we're ADSing and starting a fight. We want our sensitivity to feel the same across both. So how do we do that? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, these two ADS sensitivity multipliers should both be set to one. Um, there might be some people out there who like to change their high zoom. So um, that's at magnification levels of 3.25 or more. So if you're using like a four times or something, you might want a slightly higher or a lower. That's kind of personal preference, but I would recommend that you stick it at one. ADS sensitivity transition timing. This says when we zoom in, how far through that zooming that we do, uh, do we want the ADS sensitivity kind of relativity thing to kick in. This should be instant. We don't want this to be after zoom because a lot of the time we're fighting before we're even zoomed in and we don't want our ADS and our, our sensitivity to be thrown off that quickly. So put it on instant so that as soon as you start ADSing, you get that sensitivity kicking in, you get that one-to-one -one feeling. The final thing is the monitor distance coefficient. Now this will be default set to 1.33, but this is incorrect for most people, especially those like me who are on a 1080p monitor. So when you're setting at 1080p, we can actually calculate this using a calculator by doing 1920, which is our horizontal pixels, divided by 1080, 1080p, that's our vertical pixels. When we do that, we get 1.77777 recurring. So this is equivalent to 1.78. Now that is what we want to put in here. And this is what will give us a much smoother feel when we're ADS'd and specifically a one-to-one -one feel when we're ADS'd. Massively important. And most people won't have this set. And when they, when they put it on, they're blown away by how much better their aim gets, especially when they're ADS'd. So try this out and see how much it affects your game. 
In terms of the other things in this menu, in regards to the mouse, invert mouse, not something that we want, um, unless you're some sort of freak on a leash. Uh, mouse acceleration and mouse filtering, definitely want on zero. This is similar to that enhanced point of precision that I talked about earlier. But horrible, we don't want it. And mouse smoothing as well. Yeah, we don't want to smooth our aim movement. We want everything to be one-to-one, -one, raw input. When I move from here to here, my aim goes from here to here every time without question. And there we go, guys. That is the mouse and keyboard settings for Warzone right now. Hopefully, this went into all the detail that you guys need. If you have any more questions, I will be happy to answer them down in the comments below. Leave a like on the video if you did find it informative. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.